just wanted to talk to you today about some uh, new tax that we've been describing and some ongoing work that we're working on. Um, this is a nice picture of a new paper that's come out of Hagwai, and um, that paper's just been accepted, so that's good news. I am currently at Loma Linda University in Southern California, hot down here. You guys have experienced the hot heat wave up there right now, but it's hot here usually every summer. So I've got a number of different projects I'm working on with different students. So I did my PhD here on fossil trackways in Death Valley, and I'm also working right now with fossil pupfish in Death Valley with several students. So got a lot of interest in a lot of different areas. Uh, for my master's work, I worked at Kent State University and did fossil crabs. That's why I'm still interested in fossil crabs and working on them. And that's a beautiful area. So if you're going to do a do graduate work, you should find a beautiful area. This is Newport, Oregon and uh, the Oregon coast. And during my master's work, I met up with uh, John Pham here, a nice picture of both of us when we were, well, for me at least, when I was uh, west coast of Vancouver Island in the Hesquit Formation. And from that, we the first one that we were looking at was this crab up here, which is uh, considered Renina Americana at the time, but recently has been changed in new genus. Uh, Renina, Renina Americana was sort of a garbage pail of all the genera that kind of had that right sort of fat shape to them. So this is the Renina Americana that was described by Withers. And you can see that it's quite, looks like it's been ran over several times. It's missing most of the identifiable morphological features. And then on one on the right here is the one from a Hesquite formation. And then down here is the modern Renina Renina. In Washington State, we found some very beautiful, well-preserved specimens. And from here, we were able to say, well, how do we compare it to the Renina Americana? Well, we could say that this is sort of throw that one away and let's use these as our distinguishing characteristics for that genus and species. So you can look at the frontal margin here and you can see there's quite a bit of differences here. You can just look at the rostrum itself. It's quite distinct from the modern Renina Renina. So from there, we're able to say, well, we probably have a new genus, which we did do, Afarinina, and then we made and named it after a collector down in Oregon, Blandi. So this is the one now from the Hesque formation, now called Afarinina Blandi. We also did some work on Macrochira, uh, named Macrochira Jaya after Jay Howley, and that resulted in a paper as well describing all the macrochira from pretty much the Northeastern Pacific from all the way from Canada, all the way down to California. And we're recently now working on Megacos. Um, it's quite a common crab found on the West Coast. And I believe it probably does represent a new species. So we're gonna be working on that here coming up in the next year. And then recently, uh, James Wood sent these to me from Nuka Island. They're isopods, which are quite distinct and quite interesting. You can see the whole pleon here with the spines. And they are related to the modern Bathynomus, which is just a really cool organism that lives sort of on the, it's sort of a scavenger on the bottom of the oceans. And the question is, is it Pelagia or Bathynomus? Uh, we're gonna be figuring that one out. LA County Museum has the uh, type specimens of Bodotorum. So we'll probably figure that out in the next year. So we'll be working on that here the next year. And then just some other things we've worked on uh, recently in the last well, five, 10 years. Uh, from Appian Way, we have a little Maniadopsis. Other stuff from Appian Way that still needs to be described is probably Homala there and Alignu Paris. And then as we get into the Nanama group, uh, we have a lot more fossil crabs, of course. So we've been working a bit on those. Uh, Archaeopus was worked on recently with Sandy, who did a thank you very much for doing a great job on the, the drawings of these. We were able to uh, describe several new species. 
from there. And then we also were able to uh, reevaluate the species that were previously described, Rostritis and Bicornatus. And again, Sandy did a great job with uh, the drawings, and then we were actually able to compare it through time, the changes in the rostrum, the frontal region of this genus of Mercia. I'm sorry, Archaeopus. And then we also described Petrolithus from an area near Victoria. So that's also a recent one with uh, James Haggart and John Pham and Dan Bowden. And then also Cretolhoma Bowenai from uh, the Nanamo group near Courtney. So those are just some of the papers that we've been working on. Um, so a few more here, a redescription of Preclerocarcinus. Um, Graham Beard and John Pham, and then a new little dromid crab from Hornby Island. And then, the, so those are sort of just, again, just the papers that we've been working on, uh, me and Alessandro and some other colleagues um, with John Pham, Jim Haggard as well. Um, the one we're working on right now is in Hadaguay, uh lobsters from that area. And this paper has just been, we just got the reviews back, so we're working right now. Uh, working on those, but this paper's been accepted, so that's exciting. They're all very novel um, lobsters from here. So we've got this one here. This is from John Pham's collection. Uh, this Sharon Hubbard uh, collected from Robber Island. And then uh, Homeris, which very kindly we're able to and very needed to actually uh, name after John Pham. So because he was he had this as his specimen here. So very nice preservation. So that paper again, that's worked on and it's been, it's been uh, reviewed. It's gone through the review process. So it should be coming out probably in September or so. So another group of, of interest here is the Joe Renina. It used to be Paleocharistes. That's probably what most of you probably recognize it as. It was described in 1896. This is Joe Renina as Paleocharistes harvii. And a lot of the group of people, group of crustacean workers have sort of separated this out because of these two spines here. And it doesn't correlate. This is one I have alone from the Courtney Museum. It doesn't correlate with the one spine on the modern species or the one that is collected most often now. So a lot of people have just kept Harvey out because of these two spines and said, okay, Harvey has these two spines with its own separate species. And in this case, we have this one. So what is what do these specimens represent? The Joronina platice was described from the Hudspeth Formation in Oregon, and it has some similarities. So uh, they just said, okay, well, these ones are probably platus. But now we have better preserved specimens that are coming out of the Hudspeth, and this one doesn't have much of the cuticle, so much of the shell has been dissolved away exposed you can see here iron oxide so you can see that it's quite detailed and compared to the holotype that was described so it's not the same at all so if you look at the platys on this side compared to the specimens from vancouver island you can see that they're not the same at all in actuality this is not a joe renina it's probably going to be maybe a new genus and this goes back to, now we've gone full circle now, and this is now back to just Joe Renina. So how does it relate to now to Harvey Eye? Well, luckily, uh, Ottawa has been very kind. They're now sending me the type specimens of Joe Renina Harvey Eye. So hopefully we'll be able to see if this is actually, this is kind of a bit of artistic licensing here. He sort of added spines here that probably aren't really here. So once we get the holotype from Ottawa, we might be able to actually say, okay, is this Harvia or do we have something different? And then we also have some odd ones here. This is from Little Quillicum River. Um, this is probably going to be Joe Renina, but a different species. It's got tubercles here that aren't on the other ones from the Nanamo group. So quite distinctly different. Um, John Pham uh, has loaned me these specimens from Hadagai. And they most likely are a different species as well. And then we've got this very interesting one from Rick Ross. Thank you, Rick, for sending this. As you can see, it's quite distinct. It's not going to be a Joe Renina. It's going to be some other kind of Ranonid. It just shows that this is the only, this is the first Ranonid that it's been 
uh, found in the Hornby Island area. So it just shows that many years of collecting, you can still find some novel, some interesting uh, specimens from there. So we're going to work on that. And then Brinkicar sinus, we've been working on that for a long time. So we're going to finish that one up as well. So hopefully I didn't went through those very quickly. And then uh, Oyster River, we've got these little interesting dwarf crabs that are associated with plant debris. So maybe a brackish water, maybe a interesting uh, area where the ocean and the freshwater are meeting. And so we're gonna be describing those here for the next few months as well. All right, hopefully everybody could hear me and didn't have any internet problems. Um, that went by very fast, but uh, I thank you for your time on that. And uh, if anybody would like papers or anything, you can email me and let me know what you'd like. And uh, yeah, some interesting stuff coming out of there still. There's been a lot of work. That's just the work I've been doing. There's uh, the people have been done work over the years as well.